everyone, my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. Once again, I want to apologize. The weather has just not been working with me, so we're going to try this video with my orange lights on and hopefully it's a little bit better. <laughs> I want to talk about something that anchors me more than the Ready Player One adaptation by Steven Spielberg. Mid-series cover changes. Now, I'm not talking about those series that they finished and then they just decided, you know, we're going to release it with new covers like Shadow and Bone, because at least then you have you know, both of them. Or even series, like, I don't see the point of it, but series that have different paperback covers than they do hard covers. I don't understand the logic of that either, but that, once again, you can deal with. I'm talking about literally deciding halfway through a four-book series that you're changing the covers, they're going to have zero zero connection to the beginning covers and they're not going to make it so that you can get some sort of matching cover set they just want you to buy brand new books again now i know there's like a bunch of videos on youtube about this but it does leg legitimately anger me so i want to talk about some of them and tell you if i think they were an upgrade or a downgrade i mean it still does anger me when they change them but at least if you're going to change them do it so the cover's better right like that's a logical, like, up swing. That makes sense. So the first book slash series is The Good Days Club by Alison Goodman. So here's our original, dark, and I love the actual physical cover. I had a physical copy. It had, like, lace imprints kind of gloss, too, on it. And then they changed it to this. I mean, I don't know a person that would argue that that is an upgrade. I mean, that is a hardcore downswing. It doesn't make it look anything special. It looks like a bunch of other generic covers. It does not lend to the tone of the book, having read the first book. And I actually decided to unhaul the first book, and I'm not buying the rest of the series because of that. I hate when they do that. I hate the cover as well. The white, British-y looking woman in a white, thin shift. Like, no, we just, we don't need more of that. And the cover doesn't look then there's Born Wicked by Jessica Spotswood. So this is the original cover, and this was the new cover. Now, in all honesty, I didn't really like either covers. However, I feel like the first one was a little bit more darker and whimsical, and I think did a little bit better job of aligning with the theme and the feeling of the book. Once again, this is one that I've read. And the other books just looked very... Sabrina the Teenage Witchy and like not in a good way not in like an homage way it was just like three blonde white girls on the cover <laughs> which once again have we seen that an awful lot yes do we really need it nah. does it say anything about the books no not really so I, I, I'd say downgrade even though I don't really like either cover then there's the Veronica Speedwell series. Now, I'm actually kind of thankful about this because I didn't know about this series when the original cover came out. So the first book is A Curious Beginning, and this was the original cover. And then they switched it to these covers. I actually have the new covers. I actually do prefer them. However, the first one isn't... I mean, it doesn't stand out particularly, but it does actually, I think, do like a relatively good job of connecting like what the book is talking about. It is a little bit darker of a mystery. However, there's a lot of comedy tones to it and a lot of whimsy and lots of sarcasm and sassiness and romance and adventuring. And um, I can't remember what the word is, but like bot, not botany, whatever the butterflies are. I can't remember what it's called. And lots of kind of adventure and mystery soaked into that. So I feel like the second book actually does lend itself a bit more to that. And I like the actual covers that they have continued on with the series in the new design. So I'd actually say this one was an upgrade. Then there was Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordova, I think is her last name. I apologize if it's not. So I actually remember seeing this book in the bookstore quite a bit and was quite interested. It looked very, um, like, Mexican Halloween-y, and this is the original cover. And now the second book, Bruja Born, has been released, and they released a new cover for Labyrinth Lost to coordinate with the Bruja Born cover. I actually like them. I think this is kind of an upgrade, though the first one did catch my eye in the bookstore just because of all the covers and like the half face thing. I think I've like I've never read these books, though, to be fair. But the other one looks very, very cool. And I like that it coordinates with the second book. I look at it and I think like history and mystery and like elements, like something at the center of everything. I don't know if that's what the book is actually about, 
but I actually would say this was an upgrade. I actually really like them. It's got like lots of little detail designs and yeah. Then An Ember in the Ashes by Sabat Tahir. So these was the first book and the second book was along the same theme. And then all of a sudden, right before the third book came out, they decided they were going to change the covers for the last two books to this. I feel like I've made my thoughts known on this in a vlog before, but this is a tremendous downgrade. It, I know she said it was supposed to be Assassin's Creed inspired. It looks like Assassin's Creed ripoff to me. Now, I understand her logic of it was to get more person of color representation on book covers, which I think is great. However, they did it for the third book where the third book's cover is not the person of color in the center. It's the white looking woman. I didn't I didn't understand that. And then they went and redid only the paperbacks for the first two. Now, those books were actually quite expensive in Canada. They were about $30 a piece. So they were just like, well, no, you're SOL. So you have to go rebuy the two first books in paperback to get them to match the last two, which are going to be in hardcover. Oh, no, no. So I unhauled those. I won't be continuing to buy the series. I honestly really hate those covers. The book is dark and gritty and depressing. And there's lot. there's like a slave rebellion and everything. That was the vibe I got from on the first book. The first book, the cover is what drew me in and I went to read the summary. I've glossed over books with the cover of the new ones so many times. It doesn't look interesting to me. It looks done before. It doesn't look unique. And just no, no. All for person of color representation on books, hate mid-series cover changes, and this was a downgrade. Then there's Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier, and I actually was really upset about this one. Flame in the Mist, the first book, the original cover, is amazing and beautiful, and the details when you get it at, like, physical copy, there's things lifted, and you have the, like, star sword things. It looks like it's a Mulan retelling. It makes sense. You look at that and you go, Mulan retelling? That, yes. And then they changed to whatever this Photoshop paint cover is. Once again, I understand person of color representation. However, the f I mean, it, it doesn't look good. It just like they oh, changed the opacity of someone and faded them into the background. It doesn't make sense. It also makes the book seem like the main character is much more passive and timid and dainty, which eh, not really crazy about. It just... A, a massive downgrade and I all I loved her first series um Wrath and the Dawn and actually I wonder if I have it yeah the books do I have these ones and there is a person of color you can see in the um in the background cutouts there and the paperback version it's very clearly a person of color so I'm all for I'm all for that and I'm understanding of like when she started it she had this really successful series already to go on so I'm not quite sure what why she didn't have the bargaining ability when she started this new series which is a Mulan retelling which is clearly going to be massive and then they changed it to whatever that is it uh, no so I unhauled my copy of Flame in the Mist and if I read the second book it'll be through the library then there's Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. See, this one is weird because I read the first book and didn't like it. And, I mean, the cover is all right. This is the original cover. And then they changed after book one in book two to this. I actually think that this is up an upgrade. Now, I, once again, I can understand people being annoyed because I think this is another one where they said the paperback will have the new cover of the first book, but the hardcovers won't. So you have to have the first in paperback and the second in hardcover for the covers to match or you can get both in hardcovers and the covers don't match which that's just douchebag move but i feel like this one does a bit better of a job of get, getting a sense of the setting whereas the other one just looks like it wasn't horrible but it just looks very basic whereas the other one has a lot of details to it which i kind of appreciated that and it looks like a lot of um i think they're japanese the um like the the outset outfits that we see with like all of the like the small pattern details going through and like a dragon and all that stuff so i actually really appreciate that one i think this one's an upgrade and last but not least is the abomination that is the diviners by libba bray holy jesus i don't know if this book got written taken on by some publisher and then handed down to a different imprint each time but Oh my good lord, keep a single train of thought. I don't I'm out, I can't even count how many times there's been a cover change. 
I'm pretty sure there was the first book came out, then they did a cover change. And then they decided before the second book, they were changing it again. And then those third, the second book came out and then they decided to change it again for the third book. What is wrong with you people? What I just hire someone and say, make us four covers. Like, I don't understand why this is so difficult. I don't even know which one is which anymore. I like the one that much. Yeah, I've, I've never actually read the series, and I actually refuse to read the series on principle because the co the publisher keeps changing the covers. I won't even borrow it from the libraries because they get stats for that. I don't understand what is wrong with just releasing. I think it's only supposed to be four books too, and it's gone through like six cover changes or something like that. I think the one that I like the most was one with there's a hand holding a, a card, and I think everything else is black. I think that was the one that was printed in between the first and the second book before they decided to change it again. I, I just don't even know. And I can't even figure out what the heck the book is about because the covers keep changing and it looks completely different every single time. There was the first one that I, I think I looked at it and was like, hmm, maybe I'll see what I hear. And then I didn't touch it. And then the second book came out and I was like, what the heck? Oh, is it like a flappers sort of era? murder mystery thing and I saw the new one I was like oh it's a horror oh okay I I guess it's a horror it looks kind of like the exorcist I don't I don't even know so I don't even know anymore what the heck the genre of this entire series is supposed to be and it's bad it's sad because I've heard people say the few people I know that have actually read them say they're really good books but every other person I know is like I will not buy them if anything I'll borrow them from the library or I'll pirate them because I'm not spending money to put them on my shelf and in two weeks the publisher changes to the eighth cover and oh. so I don't even think I can give this one an actual upgrade or downgrade just a fail over overall the whole thing pick a cover and stick to it it's not rocket science so let me know in the comment section down below if there was a, a series that did a cover change that made you angry or that you want me to talk about because i have a feeling we're going to do these every once in a while because publishers seem to be doing this pretty continuously make sure to check the description box down below i will link all of the books to their goodreads pages and check out my social media and if you follow me i will follow you back